Good evening, everybody. Uh, a really warm welcome to All Saints on this Advent Sunday evening for this uh, service of readings and music. We have contributions tonight in word and song from uh, across our benefice, from uh, the choir and individual musicians. We have uh, a series of readings, and the order of service is in your uh, purple sheet. And what we'll do is, uh, once we get underway, we'll continue unannounced throughout. So if you would just stay seated for the readings and for the choir pieces, and stand for the congregational hymns, that would be great. Otherwise, there won't be any announcements. Uh, in a moment, we're going to start with uh, the church in darkness. Uh, do not be alarmed. <laughs> it's not a power cut, it's deliberate. We will, we will turn the lights off, and then uh, the service will get underway with the dawning light of Advent while some music is played. Uh, the candles will be lit, and so just from a practical point of view, do be careful if you're sitting beneath a candle, uh, and uh, there are some buckets of water by the pillars should the need arise. Uh, watch out for long hair and uh, scarves and bits of paper, uh, but I think we'll all be fine. Uh, if you join the service, uh, you need any assistance and it is a bit dark, please don't be afraid to put your hand up or shout or <laughs> whatever. One of the wardens or the welcomers will come and assist you. But I hope that you will find this, uh, this time of darkness to light, of word and music and silence to be a really uh, spiritual at start to this Advent season. So if you'd like to uh, hold silence, we're going to turn the lights off now and our service will begin shortly. created the heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day.
It is time for us to wake out of sleep. For deliverance is nearer to us now than it was when first we believed. It is far on in the night. Day is near. Let us therefore cast off the deeds of darkness and put on our armor as soldiers of the light. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Brothers and sisters, today we enter the holy season of Advent, in which the Church bids us prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ, a coming that we recall in the child of Bethlehem, a coming that we experience now in the gift of his Spirit, in the bread of the Eucharist, in the joy of human lives shared. A coming we await, when God will gather up all things in Christ. Let us, in this holy season, reflect on the coming of Christ who brings light to the world. Let us leave behind the darkness of sin, walk in the light that shines on our path, and renew within ourselves the hope of glory to which he beckons us. And as we turn towards the light, let us have on our hearts all those who see no light, for whom all is darkness and despair. Let us pray that they too may be illumined by Christ, who is our light. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness, to put on the armor of light now in the time of this mortal life in which your son Jesus Christ came to us in great humility. That on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. We stand for our first hymn. Psalm 43. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against an ungodly people. From those who are deceitful and unjust, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you cast me off? Why must I walk about mournfully because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out your light and your truth, and let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. 
and I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Psalm 97. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. 
Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the worlds. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boasts in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. from um, the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. For the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. 
your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Hymn 198. <laughs> reading from Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us. So that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this.
sweet Jesus Christ come to redeem us all. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming as an unexpected hour. We're told, we've heard that God will send out his light and his truth. We're told that light dawns for the righteous. We're told to look to the east and to rejoice as the day dawns. We're told that we are children of light. We're told to be ready and to have our lamps lit. And we believe it, but the pressures of the world can sure dim that light and that faith and that hope. The pressures, the concerns, the worries of climate change and changing weather patterns. The endless cycle of news from another corner of the world, news of violence and terror, the less than perfect standards of some of our leaders, the commercialism of December which actually starts in about August the jobs to be done and the preparations to be made, all of it can make this season seem less than light. John Betjeman wrote a poem which seems to sum up that sense of slight cynicism that we try to ward off. And I encourage you, he captures it, I think, really well. I encourage you to hold out for the last couplet, which is our light. So this is uh, Advent 1955 by John Betjeman. The Advent wind begins to stir with sea-like sounds in our Scotch fur. 
It's dark at breakfast, dark at tea. And in between, we only see clouds hurrying across the sky and rain-wet roads the wind blows dry and branches bending to the gale against great skies all silver pale. The world seems traveling into space and traveling at a faster pace than in the leisured summer weather when we and it sit out together. For now we feel the world spin round on some momentous journey bound. Journey to what? To whom? To where? The advent bells call out, prepare, your world is journeying to the birth of God made man for us on earth. And how in fact do we prepare the great day that waits us there for the 25th day of December, the birth of Christ? For some, it means an interchange of hunting scenes on colored cards. And I remember last year, I sent out 20 yards laid end to end of Christmas cards to people that I scarcely know. They'd sent a card to me, and so I had to send one back. Oh dear, is this a form of Christmas cheer? Or is it, which is less surprising, my pride gone in for advertising? The only cards that really count are that extremely small amount from real friends who keep in touch and are not rich but love us much. Some ways indeed are very odd by which we hail the birth of God. We raise the price of things in shops. We give plain boxes, fancy tops and lines which traders cannot sell, thus parceled, go extremely well. We dole out bribes we call a present to those to whom we must be pleasant for business reasons. Our defense is, these bribes are charged against expenses and bring relief in income tax. Enough of these unworthy cracks. The time draws near, the birth of Christ, a present that cannot be priced, given 2,000 years ago. Yet, if God had not given so, he still would be a distant stranger and not the baby in the manger.
Let us pray. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. The response to our prayers when I say, let us pray to the Lord, is Lord have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. That God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And so we join our prayers together and pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour Christ taught us to say. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Final hymn, number 307.
Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you, those for whom you pray and remain with you always. Amen. Our Lord says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen.